To understand the, um, the login and non-login concept, we need to understand what, what it is we're doing when we're actually logging into the computer. So when you go to your home page and you click on your little user icon and you type in your password and press enter, in the background there's actually something called um, a login shell that is running. The same thing happens when you change users. So we changed users with the su or the su command um, previously in this video. And when we do that, a login shell, um, that, that would be considered a login shell. So to understand this, we can look at the hierarchy of files that the computer will look at for a login shell versus a non-login shell. So if we go over here, we can see that with a login shell, um, the computer is first going to look for the Etsy profile file. It will then check to see if the .bash profile in your home directory exists, and if it does, it's going to source that file and stop. So it won't look at .profile or .bash login. Now if it doesn't find that, it's going to go to the next line and look for the .profile. And if it doesn't find that, it's finally going to look for the .bash login. Let's take, quickly take a look at these files and then we'll kind of do an example of what happens when we actually log in. So we're in the terminal here and what we can do is cat out the Etsy profile file. It's going to ask me for my password and you can see all this file is is just a few lines and it just does some basic rudimentary setup so not too complicated there that's always run no matter what in your login process the next one would be the bash profile so I'm in my home directory and if we do ls-a you can see that I have this thing called a bash profile so let's go into that bash profile um, or we can just cat it out bash profile and you can see that it does two main things and also you might notice that at the top we have this little echo command so I put that there for the purpose only for this video you should not have any sort of like standard out um, uh, output in any of these files because that's going to happen every time this file is sourced so in other words if we type source bash profile you're going to see this is coming from bash profile um, and then you're going to see a bunch of other stuff down here because I've put that in other files as well. Alright so we've got that and um, what these basically do is it checks for it first checks for the file called dot profile because uh, the bash profile all that should do is load the profile and then load bash RC. The profile is where we're going to include anything that is like a non-bash command. So if we come into our profile, you can see that I have a bunch of stuff in here already, but truly it's not needed because we put this in our uh, bash profile. Um, or not, yeah, our bash profile. So we can delete this set of commands right here. Now this set of commands right here, the path where it sets our path for us, that would be put here because this is like kind of like a non-bash uh, related command and it sets up our path environment variable. We could also do stuff like um, we could set up an alias in here or a couple aliases. So uh, maybe you set up an alias where you say la equals ls la. So just a, a much easier way to type out that command. So that would all go in this dot profile um, file. And then finally you have the uh, login. So if we go back here, just to recap, you have the bash login is the, the last fallback file. And we generally won't have this file even existing. Um, and if it exists, we don't really do anything with it. So I wouldn't worry about that. Now we're going to demonstrate what the login process actually looks like. So let's switch over to Alice. Um, let's make sure we're in the right place. So we need to go to Zach and then we're going to SU Alice. 
and we'll do the login. So what we're doing is we're switching over to Alice's profile and we're, uh, we're executing a login shell. That's what that last little dash dash login flag does. So let's give it the password and you can see nothing was output. Now this actually does make sense because Alice has a totally different environment set up than uh, my user does. So if we cd out um, and then we go into Alice's directory we can see the file she has and all she has is the dot profile and if you cat that out it's not going to have all of those echo statements at the bottom. So let's go back and see what um, logging into the Zach profile as um, I have it set up looks like. So if we go sue um, Zach and then give it the login flag to do a login shell, we're going to give it the password and then we will expect to see those three lines of output. And we do, that means that all three of those files were sourced um, in that particular order, which is what we would expect. So the next topic would be uh, that of a non-login shell. And this is a little bit simpler. All it does is the computer is going to look for the, in the Etsy uh, directory, it's going to look for the bash.bashrc, which does uh, a little bit of just initial setup. We can come back and look at that in a second. And then finally, it will source the bashrc, which actually sets up our bash shell. And that's going to only contain stuff that has bash-related commands in it. So let's go back to the terminal take a look at what's in these files. So if we sudo cat etsy and then bash dot bash rc, you can see that it's a it's kind of a longer file compared to the etsy profile um, for our login process, but really it's it's a bunch of simple stuff going on. For example, right here we're setting up bash completion, so when we tab um, to complete our commands, that's what allows us to do that because it's already been set up. Um, this right here is where I believe if you run a sudo command when you're not supposed to, it gives you some output. And then right here, it sets up what happens if you try to execute a package or a, um, a library that doesn't exist. So that's just some basic setup that happens. That's always going to run. But the real meat of the bash shell in terms of configuration is in that bash rc file. So we can cat that out. Um, let's see what directory we're in first. We're at the Zach home, so we can cat out dot bash rc. And you can see that um, this one has quite a lot of stuff in here, and um, a lot of this was already written by the um, download when I downloaded the Ubuntu distribution, and I could update this however I would like. But it's just setting up a lot of the basic things that happen when um, you're working within the bash shell. And this is where you could set like when you run the less command, which kind of prints out files uh, page by page, you can set out what that looks like. So right here, that's what that's doing. Um, you can do a whole lot of other stuff. And as you will see down here, we have some aliases being set up. Generally, you'd want to put that in the dot profile um, file, but this is what came as default. I haven't changed it, so it is what it is. So that's going to um, happen every time you open up a new terminal, which is um, pretty much like most of the stuff that you're going to do. So every time you open the window that we are working in right now, it's going to run this flow of the etsy bash.bashrc and then the bashrc. So that is kind of the basics of the login versus non-login shell. Hopefully it gives you a better idea of what you should be putting in each of these files. To recap, you're going to put um, in the bash profile, you're going to have, uh, you're going to source the dot profile and the dot bash rc. And then in the bash rc, or in the profile, you're going to put your um, environment variables and aliases. And in the bash rc, you're going to set up anything that is directly related to the bash shell. One note that I want to make in regards to the login, non login shell is that if you're running a Mac computer, you by default will be, every time you open the terminal, it will run as a login shell. And if you want this option on Linux, you can actually go into the preferences of the command line. So if you right click on the terminal and then select preferences, you'll be put into this screen where 
you see some preferences and if you go over to um, maybe command you can see there's an option here that says run command as a login shell so if I select that which I'm not going to because there's no I don't have a reason to but if you selected that every time you open up a new terminal window it's also going to run as a login shell so just wanted to clarify that if you're on a Mac this happens automatically if you're on Linux you need to manually set it